Hello, it is so good to be with you again this week. We want to continue our study from last week on the heart of worship. Um, I want to I want to uh, go back and kind of reiterate, if if I can, on the three barriers that are are blockers or that uh, block our total surrender unto God. And again, I'll remind you, these are the. The, I think three major barriers, but the Lord could speak something to you that in your own personal life, there's something else that's a barrier for your total surrender unto God. Whatever the Lord speaks, always yield to that because He's perfect, He's our God, He's our Creator, He knows. He knows what we don't know, amen? But um, on those three barriers, I'm gonna start um, and reiterate uh, where I left off last week was with fear, um, I want to share with you out of the book of Isaiah, chapter 41 and verse 10, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. Yes, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is our strengthener. He is our helper. He is not one that we're to be afraid of. Fear, reverential fear, holy reverential fear is one thing that we should always have of God, just in His sovereignty and just in reverencing and in all of who He is. But being afraid of opening up and surrendering and submitting unto God is never anything that we should fear doing because again the enemy never wants us to submit and surrender because he fears the power we're going to have over him by doing so i think i told you um last week about the uh, sorry that was bugging me stuck down in my shirt i i shared with you last week um about you know just our our total surrender and how sometimes we can fear surrendering because someone here on earth is as we submitted to their authority or as we surrendered ourselves to them in our love for them and maybe they physically harmed us maybe they emotionally harmed us maybe they spiritually harmed us and 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 maybe they sexually harmed us and you know there's many ways that we can be hurt and 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 harmed um, in the giving of ourselves and 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 we relate that to God oftentimes and you know God doesn't bring harm to his children he's not a guard to harm us He's a God that wants to bless us and heal us and deliver us and hold us up as his trophy, showing us off to others. This is my trophy. This is my child. This is my daughter. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. He wants to be able to speak those words over us to others, just like he did Jesus. This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. And God is well pleased when we totally surrender and submit unto him. And, and I shared with you James 4, 7. And in that scripture, one version of the Bible says, um, submit yourselves unto God, then resist the devil and he'll flee from you. So I share with people often that our submission unto God actually gives us power over our enemy because submit yourself unto God, then resist the devil and he'll flee. So it gives us the power to resist all the things that the enemy would try to come against us with, amen? And cause him to flee, run from us instead of us running from him. So submission brings power in our lives and, 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 and the greatest power source is God. And when we're submitted and surrendered unto him, the power of his love floods us. And it's the power of that love that will reach this lost and dying world. It's the power of that love that will bring healing into our broken places. 
and I share this with you, and I may share it every single time we're together. My high five. Love covers all. Love conquers all. Love forgives all. Love is all. God is love. His love conquered our enemy for us. Mm. His love covered all of our sins. His love forgave all of our sins. He is love and he is reaching out to you right now. Mm. Covers all, conquers all, forgives all is all. God is all. He's all in all. He's all we need. <laughs> He's the great I am that I am. Right? What did he say in the Old Testament? Tell them, I am sent you. <laughs> He's it. He's all. He's everything. He's all you need. And he wants to be the one that's all you reach for. The only one that you totally surrender to complete and all in worship and in reverence of him. The second one would be pride. Um, we know that pride is what got Satan kicked out of heaven, you know, and then because he was so angry that he got kicked out, he wants everyone else to stay out too, right? It's his vendetta against God, right? To get back at God, to try to keep us out. And so he came in to bring division, divide and conquer with Adam and Eve. And he whispered in their ear and he said, Do, you know, God just doesn't want you to eat of the fruit because he knows if you, and I'm paraphrasing, and it's found in um, Genesis chapter uh, 3 and verse 5, I think it is. Yeah, let's go there. Genesis um, 3 and 5, and we'll just turn there real quick. And... Um, Let's see if we can get there quickly. Um, Genesis 3 and verse 5 says, or let's start with 4. It says, Then the serpent, which we know is Satan, said to the woman, You surely will not die. Verse 5. For God knows that on the day you eat of, uh, on the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So he was deceiving them, right? Um, and into walking in the same pride that he was walking in that got him kicked out because he wanted them kicked out of heaven, right? He wanted them separated from God because he was separated from God. He was jealous of their affection and their worship unto their creator. He was jealous of what they had and what they walked in, the fullness of God. And so he came to deceive so he could divide and conquer and hopefully separate them for eternity from God. But God had a plan. He wanted to separate you and I for eternity from God, but God had a plan. And we were in his plan. And you're in it today. You were in it then. And you're in it now. And he loves you. And he's drawing you unto himself to surrender all for the sake of the call. To surrender all and to worship the true and living God. But Satan wants us to get puffed up within ourselves. He wants us to think that we don't need God. Like I shared with you last week, you know, I was raised to be the one to be in control. Got to be in control. Don't ever let nobody be in control. You take charge. You do for yourself. You don't need nobody. You do. and, and so that was bred into me and it was, in, in, it was imprinted into my mind and my thought pattern. It was my way of thinking. And how many of you know the Word of God says in the book of Proverbs, as a man thinketh, so is he. So what I was thinking, that's what I became, right? And that becomes our words. It becomes our actions, what we think on, because what we think on gets in our heart. And what gets in our heart comes out of our mouth and becomes the actions that we take. And our thoughts, our thought pattern will be 
what guides us, right? And, and can guide us in a right direction or a wrong direction. So what we think on is not, we don't need to be thinking on prideful things and I'm, I can do this alone and I don't need God and I don't need anybody. I can, I'm, I'm tough, I'm strong, I can do it. I can, you know, and, and we, we get this mindset and God's saying, no, no, that's a lie of your enemy because he wants you puffed up with pride because he wants you to fall like he fell. What does the Bible tell us about pride? Pride comes before the great fall. It doesn't say just a fall. It says the great fall. You see, Satan had a great fall and his pride came right before that. And pride set in and boom, he fell. He fell and he fell hard. Never to get to be in heaven again. And that's what his goal is for you and I, is to keep us from that because of his jealousy of us and our relationship with our Father through Jesus Christ and the leading of Holy Spirit. But I'm here to tell you today, if you'll just surrender and submit you'll be led into the greatest relationship that you've ever known in your lifetime on this earth. And God will be able to just consume you with himself. And when you're consumed with him, you are consumed with agape, unconditional love. And that is what the world needs to bring salvation and restoration and healing to reap in the end time harvest. So don't let pride be something that separates you from God, something that keeps you from surrendering all because in your surrender gives you power in your submission to cause the enemy to run from you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Turn your Bibles, if you will, with me to Luke chapter 5 and verses 4 and 5, and I'm going to read this to you out of the Passion Translation first. And um, so number three is confusion. Being confused will keep us from surrendering because, like, I'm confused. I don't know what to do. Like, Oh, I'm thinking this, I'm thinking that, I'm looking at this direction, that. I don't really know, right? And confusion will keep us from surrendering. And God wants us to be able to surrender all. Luke chapter 5, verses 4 and 5 in the Passion Translation says this, Jesus sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished, he said to Peter, Now row out to deep water to cast your nets, and you will have a great catch. Master, Peter replied, We've just come back from fishing all night and didn't catch a thing. But if you insist, we'll go out again and let down our nets because of your word. Peter's saying, This is confusing, like, we just did this all night. We didn't get anything. And now you're telling us to go do this? Like, I'm confused, but you know what? If you're saying it, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to walk on your word. I'm going to just follow your words. As you speak, so it shall be. So I'm going to do that. And that's the place God wants us to be. He doesn't want us to be confused. He doesn't want us to be confused with what we believe and who we believe in and why we believe it. And he doesn't want us to be confused that surrender and submission is wimpiness. He wants us to know that surrender and submission is power. And it's great power. And it's the power that will overcome the powers of darkness. Because as I'm submitted and surrendered to God, he can fully do whatever he wants with me. And when he can do what he wants with me, he can do what he wants through me. And when he does what he wants through me, it's going to be using me. 
and, and I'm using myself, but this is for you and me. He wants to do what he wills in and through us to build his kingdom by using us as his mouthpiece, as his hands and his feet on this earth, as his heart being poured out in the earth to reap in that end time harvest. He doesn't want us to be a part of that great falling away. He wants us to be a part of those that are standing or kneeling in this posture saying, I surrender all. And in that surrender, we're given power. And that power is to do his will and bring honor and glory unto our Lord and Savior, unto El Elyon, the Most High God. I want you to listen to this quote by A.W. Tozer. He says, the reason many are in trouble is because they haven't come to the end of themselves. We need to come to the end of ourselves, to where there's no more us, and it's all about God. Amen? In that place is a great place to be, where we come to the end of us, and there's no more us. But it's all about him. Amen. It is when we try to be God, we end up most like Satan. We can't be the God of our own lives. We cannot be the God that's seated on the throne of our heart. We need to submit and surrender and let him, El Elyon, the most high God, the true and living God, our great creator, be the one that sits on the throne of our heart. That it's no more us and it's all him. Often my prayer during worship is God. I want more of you and less of me till there's none of me and all of you. I want more of you and less of me until there's none of me and all of you. I want more of you, O oh God, and less of me until there's none of me and all of you. Because it's only in that place that he will be the most glorified, the most honored with these bodies being living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto him. Amen? C.S. Lewis said this. He said, the more we let God take us over, the more we truly become ourselves because he made us. The more we truly become who we're supposed to be our real selves. I'm going to read that one again. The more we let God take us over, the more we truly become ourselves because he made us. Letting God take us over, have full control. Spirit, soul, and body, here I am, Lord. Do with me what you will. Amen? Amen. Surrendered people obey God's word, even if it doesn't make sense. <laughs> okay, Lord, I don't understand, but if you say so. Here I am, Lord. We can't call Jesus our Lord if we refuse to obey him. If he's really our Lord, he's our master. And what does a slave say to the master? Yes, master. Yes, master. And they do exactly what the master has given them instruction to do. Because there's a great price to pay when they don't. 
See, the enemy never wants us to know that if we're not willing and obedient unto our Lord, our Savior, our Master, unto God, the Most High God, that we're actually yielding ourselves to destruction. And he never wants us to know that. And he wants us to be confused about how much we're to surrender and what we're to surrender. And, you know, well, you don't really have to listen. To that. You're a grown adult. And he wants us to be puffed up within ourselves. He wants us to be confused about what we're supposed to do. And he wants us to fear surrender. But I'm here to tell you today that surrender and submission is the most powerful thing you can do when you submit and surrender unto our Heavenly Father. He loves you and He's waiting and He's compelling us and luring us by His Holy Spirit to come into that place of worship and total surrender unto Him. <clears throat> Abraham followed God's leading without knowing where it would take him. He just, okay, Lord, you say so, right? I remember when God was leading us here to New Mexico. And a lot of people thought we were crazy, didn't think we'd heard from God. This can't be God. You don't have a home. You don't have a fat bank account. You don't have a better vehicle, you don't, you know, it was just all these things that we didn't have, like how can you do this? And yet we knew that God was calling us here. And our heart, though it was very difficult for us to leave, our familiar, our children, our grandchildren, though I cried all the way from Ohio to New Mexico. Yet my heart was to obey and to submit unto the will of the Father. And I look back now, this year's 28 years ago, that we left Columbus, Ohio, came to Farmington, New Mexico, on a word from God. Submitting and surrendering our will unto the will of the Father. And I look now and I think what would have happened if we would have been in a state of confusion by listening to all the voices that were trying to speak to us. This couldn't be God. Well, if this was God, it would be this way. And if it was God, it would be that way. And maybe it's not the right. And should you really go now? And everything, if we had listened to all those different voices, well-meaning Christians that were trying to lead us, but the Spirit of the Lord was the voice that God wanted us to listen to and to submit to. And that's the voice. We looked at each other and we said, we know that it's God's timing. And we know that our heart is to obey him. So we're going to do what he said do. We're going to do it in his timing. And I don't regret one day of being here in 28 years. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I think of all the lives that have been affected just through two people being obedient. How many lives could be affected by you saying, yes, Lord? Just listening to his voice. Just being led by his spirit. Just surrendering your will unto the will of the Father. Just worshiping him. Our worship, true worship, is true surrender and true submission. And that is worship unto our Father. 
And that will always bring you to a place of complete prosperity and total victory. Mm. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hannah waited for God's perfect timing without knowing when. Mary expected a miracle without knowing how. Joseph trusted God's purpose without knowing why circumstances happened the way they did. But he trusted God's purpose. I believe God's asking you today, will you trust me with your whole heart and not lean to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge me and let me direct your path? Because the steps of a good man or good woman are ordered by me, says the Lord. Are you willing? Will you be obedient? So that you may eat the good and the fat of the land. So that you may be a vessel of honor unto him. True worship is submission and surrender. Mm. Hallelujah, Jesus. Each one of these, Abraham, Hannah, Mary, Joseph, were surrendered fully to the will of God. Will you do that today? Will you say, here I am, Lord. Take me and do with me what you will. And in my total surrender and total submission is my true worship unto you. And I want to be a worshiper. And I want to lead others in how to truly worship you, Lord. Mm. Hallelujah, Jesus. I have so much more. But I don't have time today. But we may do part three next week because it's so good. Share on all your socials, if you will, please. And also, if you have a prayer request, please put it in the chat, and we will answer those. And let us know where you're watching from. We would love to know. We would love to connect and communicate with you. Thank you so much. We love you. God bless you. Be blessed. You are highly favored of your Father.